Okay, welcome to our first podcast on the development unit at uh, Geography. Um, what we're looking at today is Rosto's model for development. Now, what you're going to get in the development unit is a whole series of conceptual models that attempt to take what is really an incredibly complex topic um, and simplify it down into, in, into a basic model. What you should be able to do is you should know the model, you should understand how different countries apply to it, but you should be able to critique it as well. Now, Rosto's model was developed in 1960 by uh, an American economist, um, and it states um, that there, uh, all countries progress through five levels of development. So, what he suggested is that all countries start as traditional societies. These are agrarian, um, these are small villages, not necessarily subsistence agriculture, but there isn't massive amounts of trade. Um, there will be government, but it will be fairly weak. Um, and essentially people will live uh, year, year to year, sort of, some years they'll have good crops, some years they'll have bad crops, so the population stays fairly low. Now, most societies on Earth were traditional societies um, up until about the 1700s, when countries like the UK started to move away from this. Um, and the only real societies that would still be traditional today are things like your Amazonian tribes. So, what Rosso said was that all societies will move towards the next section, which is preconditions for takeoff. So what Rosto said is that over time, societies will move from agrarian into a more industrial manufacturing type uh, environment. Um, in order for countries to reach this second stage, preconditions for takeoff, they need to have a movement towards industrial or manufacturing industry. They need to be moving towards trading beyond the regional level, okay, so nationally or potentially internationally. Um, and they need to be building services up. Okay, so a lot of this stage relies on the mechanisation, the intensification and the improved efficiency of agriculture. Because you need to be building up stocks of grain so you can weather storms or bad years. Um, you need to be increasing the amount of agriculture uh, agriculture output, so not every member of society needs to be farming. That means that frees people up to then go and do other jobs, such as develop industry, uh, mechanise things, think about new ways of government, think about new ways of doing things. Um, so he said there's those kind of three things that were needed for the agrar for for this stage. Um, he then suggested that countries will take off. Now. Rosto says that for a country to take off, um, which the UK, he suggests, did between 1783 and 1802, and that the USA did between 1840 and 1860, um, a country will take off focused around a couple of industries. So in the UK, it was really coal and the sort of iron and steel industry that we, um, that we focused on we had increased industrialization and manufacturing based around those industries. Um, in, other in, in other countries, takeoff, which is focused on one industry, might be based around the oil industry. In other countries, it might be based around uh, the export of agricultural products. Um, but he suggested broadly, you, you base your takeoff around one or two industries. Um, and during this stage, you get significant growth in the manufacturing industries focused around those those few sectors you then get significant growth and payment in taxes those taxes then can then get reinvested in a country which means you can then reinvest those taxes in developing new industries um, improving the efficiency of existing industries things like education um, all of which is focused and dependent upon a strong governmental control so for a country to move from here to here to here, uh, Rosto assumes there's strong governmental control. He assumes there is a desire to develop um, and he doesn't take into account any other factors such as war, conflict, uh, natural disasters, um, all those kind of things. So UK's in takeoff round about sort of late 1700s, early 1800s. 
Rosto then says, once you've taken off, you've got this, you then have what they call a drive to maturity. Now, a drive to maturity, UK reached this mid-1800s, okay, so during the Victorian era, which was, if you consider the British Empire and trade based around Britain was probably when Britain was at its most powerful as a global power. Um, in the drive for maturity, you've really moved away from an agrarian society. You've got, very, you've got a relatively small population of farming. You've got mostly industrial activities going on, but you're moving into the tertiary sector more so. At this stage, trade is a really important component. No country can progress through these stages without moving into international trade. So you can consider the links here to globalization, uh, the globalisation in terms of, um, say, if we're looking at the UK in the Victorian era, um, boats, we're looking at kind of this sort of wave of colonialisation that was going on, discovery, um, opening up new trade routes and all those things. So, dry to maturity, and again, this is really a stage where countries are fully industrialising. Um, and then what Rosto said the fifth stage was was the high mass consumption and this is where you've you're, you're there now Rosto reckoned that the US were the first country to get here in about the 1950s you've got mass consumption lifestyles you've got wealthy countries you've got highly industrialized um, you've got loads of uh, goods being produced you're a very international country which is trading internationally which is based on globalization completely interlinked with um, other countries in the world so that's what rosto suggested happens now clearly there are lots of issues with this one really key thing to mention is that he set this entire model up in 1960. Now, an awful lot's happened since 1960 in terms of how societies have developed, in terms of what happens beyond this stage, such as deindustrialization. Um, so Rosto's model is massively couched around an, a Eurocentric and a North American centric view of development. Um, it also challenges ideas by people like Frederick Least, which suggests that actually countries in the preconditions for takeoff who are only exporting raw materials, which is often one of the key conditions, actually get locked in, they get stuck into this kind of resource curse where they're always exporting raw materials, they've got a trade deficit, it's a real problem. Um, so it's got loads of issues. Other issues to consider if you had to critique or evaluate this are things like, do all countries progress through these five stages? Are there, are there other factors going on? Like, is it as simple as saying all countries move this way? I mean, this is focused around Europe, it's focused around North America. It doesn't really consider how a lot of Asian economies have grown recently. Um, it also doesn't consider the starting point of all societies. So, for example, it's assuming all societies start here and have good government and are able to move through these stages. Now, if you look in the wider picture of things like an awful lot of countries, particularly African and South American countries, where, or South Asian countries as well, where colonialism has been an issue, you've got a lot of countries which are locked into debt, they're in a post-colonial landscape, um, where cash crops have been forced, there's potentially been slavery, uh, and there's been a, a, a governmental control which hasn't necessarily had that country's interests at heart. So uh, certain countries haven't necessarily started at the same point and had the same strong government to move through it. So you'd have to consider that. You'd also want to consider that all countries can move up here. Now, for countries that have high mass consumption, it's really convenient to have countries that are stuck down here because these countries can access raw materials, labour, far more cheaply from these countries. So a, a developmental cynic would suggest that 
Rosto assumes that all governments and all people are trying to progress to a stage. But a cynic might suggest that actually certain people in certain countries might have vested interest in halting or slowing or hindering the development of countries lower down the continuum. So that gives you an overview of Rosto's model. Um, it's something to learn, but it's something to be able to critique. But it does give you an overall idea. Thank you.